What to do with this? Bless be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. I greet everyone the peace of the Lord Jesus. Let us stand up in reverence to the word of the Lord. We're going to open up our Bibles in the book of Genesis. Genesis. Genesis 15. Genesis 15, we're going to read verse 5. Genesis 15, verse. Genesis 15, 5, 6, 5, 6, and 18. And as after reading these verses, you're going to go to the book of John in the New Testament. John chapter first. John first, verse thirty six. The last uh, song that we sang in Portuguese it says, "The eyes had never seen, and the heart had never felt what the Lord has prepared." Isn't it what we prepared? Wh what we sang. The Lord has prepared a blessing for you and uh, the ones that are in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Fifteen, verse five. Then he brought him outside and said, "Look now toward heaven." God brought Abram outside and told him, "Look now," and pointed to Abraham, the place where he needed to look at. And he says the following: "Look now to heaven. Look now to heaven." Lord has called you tonight in order for you to look to heaven not to look we need to look to eternity look now to heaven uh, then look now towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them and he said to him so shall your descendants be And verse 6 says the following. And he believed in the Lord. The Lord has removed Abraham, called him out, told him to look at the stars. And the Lord spoke to Abraham, and Ab Abraham believed. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Lord said, and he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Abraham was justified by faith. Now verse 18. On the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, To your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. The Lord makes right away two promises to Abraham. The first to look to heaven and he believed and he was justified by faith. And because he believed, the Lord made a covenant with him gave him a land, first celestial and then the earthly, seek first the things of the Lord, everything will be added on to you. John, John 1.36, 1.36. 
Now we're going to read on John 136. And what did John, the greatest of the prophet, born of a woman? Now the church will answer. Where? The brethren can sit down. The verse says, come, he replied, and you will see. The verse is already, they already preached about what the Lord wants to do tonight. God called Abram, as I mentioned, and tells Abram in a vision that God, for Abram, he was a shield and a reward, his protector, and also his reward, because God was giving him a reward. The Lord gave him two things. I'm going to protect you and will give you a reward. According to God's project, God wants to do this with men, to protect men, and also to bless men, bless his life. We've seen that God called Abram. He shows remove Abram from where he was, the first detail. It was an environment, he moved him from this environment and brought him to another place and pointed to his project, his celestial project for Abram. And told to Abram that, that through him all the families of the earth were going to be blessed. What a wonderful thing to know that my family was blessed because of this covenant, covenant that God made all the way a long time ago with Abram. And your family, my brother, is blessed because God has made already a pact. The pact that God made, the covenant that God made with Abram was very interesting. On that day in which God spoke to Abram, he said he was going to make a covenant with Abram. He asked uh, Abram to pick up a couple of animals, and he sacrificed the animals, and uh, he divided the animals in the middle. And he would put a half of the animal on the right side and the other half on the left side. And a couple of smaller animals, they were not divided in the middle. They remained whole. It's very common at the time to do this kind of covenant. It's uh, an agreement. It's a pact of life and death. My brother here in Wayne, we're going to make a covenant. And that's how they did. The animals were divided. Uh, they were s cut in the middle. And one come from the one side, the other come from the other side. And in the middle, the covenant was made and the covenant was sealed. So it was a covenant between two men. And if my family had uh, some necessity, Wayne and his family had the responsibility or the obligation to s supply to my answer to my needs. And he if he was being attacked by his enemies, it was my responsibility to go there and defend him. We would both come back alive or dead, but that's how the covenant worked. But covenant, a man, nobody can trust. The Bible says that we should not do this. So the Lord asked him to make a sacrifice and asked that Abram, asked Abram to sleep. 
God made Abram sleep, and when Abram slept, he rested. You know the Lord. So, I, the Lord, is going to make this covenant alone with Abram. The Bible says that it got dark. There was uh, smoke, and the Lord went uh, in between those the half of the animals, and the covenant was made. It was a covenant of fire. The Lord that you serve, that that I serve, is a God that is always we answer with fire. That's why he sang a song, "Burning Fire, My Soul Is." If we look in the Bible, we'll see that even from Abel, when he offered a lamb, he made it on fire. Solomon, when he went to edify the temple, fire. The people didn't know how who to adore, and then the prophet Elias, Elijah, he said, "The God, the, I serve the true God. He will answer with fire." And the Lord answered with fire, and. The people said, only the Lord is God, only the Lord is God, only the Lord is God. In the New Testament, the Lord Jesus says that this descendants through the faith of Abraham will be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. It's a covenant that cannot be broken. This covenant that the Lord this alliance that God made with Abram did not depend on men. The only thing that men had to do was to offer the sacrifice, to offer the, to give the offer and rest. And that's why Jesus says that He is the Lord of the Saturday, right? <laughs> of the rest. So we see that the Lord made this covenant, this alliance. This agreement only he did. He didn't depend on men. And the project of God for a life and for my life is the same. Is the same. It does not depend on men. I may not. I may be unfaithful. But God will remain faithful to His covenant and to His alliance and to His agreement with man. And we read the word of the Lord. Dry mouth here. Can you bring a little bit of water for me, please? And read the word of the Lord. We see that Abram, he was blessed in everything. He didn't lack anything. His family didn't lack anything, and his descendants didn't lack a thing, anything. The Lord wants to bless you greatly. This cup's not. Uh, you brought too much water. I cannot hold this cup here. Oh, that's right. That's not going to work out. <laughs> Amen. So we see that the project of God is not only for me, but it is also for my whole descendants. And there came a moment. Which, in which the Lord had already blessed Abram, the son of the promise, had already been generated. Abram believed in something that was impossible for him. The covenant that the Lord made with Abram, the conversation between God and Abram, the promise, was something that was impossible for man. There is a song that says, What the Lord can do is indescribable. Right? What the eyes has not seen, the ear cannot heard, it has not come to a man's heart. Well, those are the things that the Lord has prepared for those who love Him. So, if you want a bless from the Lord for your life, you just need to love the Lord. And what you has, have not seen or have heard up until tonight and it has come not come to your heart at this point is what the Lord has prepared for you and your family. The Bible the blessings for those that love him because God already loves you. But 
God wants is that this love that He has um, given to you may be returned to Him. He doesn't ask anything that is not already His. The love is His, and He wants this love back to Him. And there come a, came a moment in the life of Abram. He had a son. He's the son of the promise. They have two, and they're playing here. It's, it is wonderful. And the Lord spoke to Abram. You go, bring your son to a, a determined place that I will show you. The Moriah Mount. And the Lord said, the Bible says that Abram done, has done everything according to what God has described to him. It is another advice for me and for you, my brother and my sister. The Bible says that God is a great counselor and mag magnificent in power. So there is an advice for you and I tonight. Obey the Lord. What the Lord said, and said. And how how it's going to happen? I, I don't know how it's going, to, how how we're going to do it, but I know that He is going to do it. My brother, the word of the Lord says that He went with His Son. And it's interesting that there was um, a bunch of uh, wood on the back of His Son. Yeah, you can leave it here. There was a bunch of uh, firewood on the back of his son. They went up to the Mount of Moriah. On the hand of Abram was a fire. I told you that the fire is always present. And there was an instrument to kill in order for the father to take the life of his that boy. The Bible says that they went up together. They walked together. The Lord looks from up and He sees me. And upon Isaac there was a, a bunch of woods and wood speaks of our sins. The wood, remember Jesus, what he had on his back? And uh, Isaac knew one thing. In order for me to get rid of this, the wage of sin is death. How am I going to get rid of this? God is saying me. But, at that moment, he asked a question to his father. Father, here is the fire, the knife, and the wood. But where is the lamb? It's not the lamb only. Where is the lamb for the Holocaust? The Holocaust speaks of uh, an offering that is burnt. The lamp for the Holocaust is different. It's not ju just any kind of lamp. If we read in the scriptures, what the Lord has given us uh, an ordering or rules as law was that the, the lamp of the Holocaust had to be a perfect lamp cannot have um, pests, cannot have bla blemishes, cannot be blind, cannot have any flaw. Had to be a perfect lamb. So, I had to reconcile with God. My family had to reconcile with God. What could I do? I was Jewish. I know that I'm Jewish. I'm all the way there in Israel. Go up to Jerusalem. To the temple of the Lord. The Jews, Jews, they could not go up with the family alone. They also have to 
bring a lamb. So then he would carry, a, bring a, a lamb that was perfect, and would bring to the priest. And the priest, he didn't want to know who was the one who was offering. It didn't matter for him who was offering. What mattered to the priest was to know if the lamb was perfect. If the lamb was perfect, it would be it could be used for the sacrifice and the holocaust. And then the sin of that person that was making an offer was going to be forgiven. So he presented the lamb, the priest examined the offering, it was perfect. So he would place it to the altar. The one that was offering would put his hand upon the head of the lamb and the lamb was had his throat cut and the blood was spilled and the sin of man was transferred to the lamb. The innocence, the purity of the lamb was transferred to man. So man was justified because without pouring out the blood there is no remission of sin. And then the lamb was burnt and there was a place outside of Jerusalem and outside of Israel. There is a text that said from the sins I won't, don't remember anymore. It was left in forgiveness. So now I'm pure, I'm holy. Why? Because the perfect lamb died in my place, it died to justify me, died to save me. In Isaiah, Isaiah, Isaiah 53, it says the following, He took upon myself his pains and infirmities, he was afflicted, he was oppressed. This sin that brings us peace was upon him. And through his steps, we have been cured. And that's the preoccupation of Isaac. Where's the lamb? My father, where's the lamb? The father knew. Because, because the father said, The Lord will provide. The Lord will provide. So maybe you. We came here in the house of the Lord without knowing. But God has already provided. He provided all things for your home, for your family. You have not been taken there to die, but to have an experience with God. You have been conducted to the house of the Lord not to die. Because the desire of the Lord that everyone be saved. Because God has no pleasure in the death of the ones that are unsaved because the dead don't praise the Lord, but those who are alive, they praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So Isaac, he didn't know that. Maybe you don't know, my brother, the Lord has provided all things for your home, for your house, for you, for, for your family. Because he made a covenant that cannot be broken. A failed, but my God and your God is does not fail. I sinned, but my God is does not sin. Isaac, he needed to have an experience with God. That's why he was brought to that place. My brother, you came here, you came today to this place in order to have an experience with God. Wood upon Isaac. But when Isaac was placed on the altar of the sacrifice, it was the other way around. The wood was underneath him, Isaac on top. Go to Isaac and place in his place the lamb. Isaac's sins were there forgiven. 
And God confirmed in Isaac all the project he had already made with his father there, Abram. And God wants to confirm this, his project for your life tonight. And he asked a question at that day. Father, where is the lamb for the holocaust? The perfect lamb. That was the question. He wanted to know. Where is the lamb for the sacrifice? Every question that you have, my brother and sister, that I asked to our Father, was God, is never unanswered. The Lord always spoke to men. There's a text that is interesting, the word that the Lord says once and twice with men. And nobody pays attention to it. In dreams and visions, when the deep sleep falls, God goes there and speaks and seals His word. Sometimes God is speaking to it with us and we are not noticing, but God is, is speaking. And God sent a prophet. That conversation back there about Isaac with his father was a lamb. For the, for the sacrifice, the Lord answered. And maybe we came here with many questions, seeking many answers. And God has an answer. And God will always have an answer. There's a song that says, Christ is the answer to the sinner. Do you know, Junior? Christ is the answer to the sinner. It doesn't matter. I just remember the song. For your answer, my brother and sister, Christ is the answer. Why is the lamb for the Holocaust? What did the prophet say and at this instant when the lamb was passing by? There's a song that said, I remember just another song that other sang that says the following. Gee, Christ is, will pass by. That's the one. Christ will, will, will pass by. Christ is passing by. Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The Lord wants to bless with spiritual gifts. Hallelujah. This is our God.
Hello there. The prophet John the Baptist he was used by the Lord to answer that question. Where's the lamb? Here it is. Jesus is here, my brother. Where there are two or more united in gathering my name, Jesus said, He will be there. And we have here more than two gathered around the name of the Lord Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Jesus is present, a miracle. The impossible will happen. And you who came here tonight to receive a blessing from Jesus for you and to your whole household and all your whole family. Abraham believed and he was justified. Believe in Jesus and you be saved, you and your household. And what do you need to do? Just rest. Because this sacrifice was already made. That's why when we begin the service, we plead for this blood, this blood of the perfect lamb. The blood was shed before the foundation of the world. Before the world existed. Before man was created. God had already provided a blessing for man. God already provided a blessing for your life, for your home, for household, my brother and sister. And where is the lamb of the sacrifice? Here is the lamb of the Lord that does what is impossible that does the greatest of the miracles which was forgiving mine and yours and our sins because mine, yours and our sins are forgiven we can look to heaven you know that God has already reserved a celestial house for you and I for each one of us we can also look to to the earth because what is necessary for our lives the Lord will give to each one of us the project of God is like this my brother it's perfect nothing as can be taken away or increased because it's perfect and God has a blessing especially for a man man entered here very discouraged because his project had been frustrated, especially in his home, 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 fam his home, his household. But God has a project that is unbreakable, indestructible, that cannot be, cannot fail. The project of God for your home, for my home is the Lamb of the Lord that removes sin from the world. When the Lamb of the Lord of God uh, removes sin is present in my life, in your home and my home, all the problems are resolved. Abram believed. He believed, believe, and God will act, and God will operate. The miracle that you need, that I need, will be done through Him, through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
Church will stand up. Hallelujah. What was your name? Now we're going to have a word of glorification to our God. Lord, we're going to praise your name because our promise, our promise has been fulfilled among us. Because it's speak among us tonight. We praise it because it's a promise of the Lord. Is for our church. We praise you for this land that's been prepared. We're going to a land where there will no be sadness or crying. We will praise your name because soon we'll be with you, Lord, in eternity. Blessed be your name, Lord, for your word. I spoke deeply to our hearts. Praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. Thank you for the fellowship that we have with your Holy Spirit, for your people, Lord, for the church in this place. We pray, Lord, that you may receive, Lord, our praises, our prayer, or our gratitude towards you, Lord. We offered you in the holy name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit to be with all the whole people of God now and forever. Amen. Our service is over. The brethren can sit down. Our service is over. You, my brother and sister, who are with us, we came here to the house of the Lord, and we desire some clarification regarding the word, the gift that was give, uh, said here, even a prayer for your family, for your house, for if you remain where you are, if you want, raise your hand. And the brethren will give you the right, the proper assistance. Pastor, I want to remind the church that tomorrow, 10.30 in the morning, we have the Sunday school. And everyone is invited to participate.